Welcome back to the channel. In this quick tutorial, we will briefly explain how to work out the characteristic loads, and their location, generated by the retained soil behind the wall. Then calculate the ultimate loads for designing the wall. In the next video, we will demonstrate, how to work out the bearing pressure under the base of the wall, so stay tuned. So, let's start with an example. A 2 meters tall masonry retaining wall, with a 10 kilonewtons per square meter surcharge is applied to the upper level behind the wall. The soil is a silt, sand material with a density of 20 kilonewtons per cubic meter, and an angle of friction of 30 degree. The water table is 4.5 meters below the top of the retained surface. So how can we calculate the characteristic loads, and their location generated by the retained soil behind the wall? Also, how can we calculate the ultimate loads for designing the wall? First of all, we need to work out the coefficient of active pressure, which equals 1 minus sine soil friction angle, 30, divided by, 1 plus, sine soil friction angle, 30. This gives us a value of 0.33. Next, working out the active pressure at the base of the wall, which equals the coefficient of active pressure 0.33, times the soil density 20 kN per cubic meter, times the height 2 meters. This gives us a value of 13.2 kN per meter per meter run. Therefore, for a triangular distributed load, the magnitude of the resultant force P, is the area of the triangle, which is 0.5 times 13.2 kN per meter per meter times the depth 2 meters. This gives us a value of 13.2 kN per meter run. The force of triangle acts about one third of the length of triangle. So, this is the location of the resultant force P. For a rectangular distributed load, the magnitude of the resultant force Q is equivalent to the area of the rectangle, which is 10 kN per square meter surcharge, times the depth 2 meters. This gives us a value of 20 kN per meter run. The force of rectangle acts in the middle of the length of rectangle. So, this is the location of the resultant force Q. Next, we need to work out the ultimate load combinations for designing the wall. Bear in mind, that partial factors for loads originating from pressures due to retained materials, vary depending on the type of analysis being carried out. In the case of checking for equilibrium, the following partial factors apply to dead and imposed loads. When designing the retaining structure, EN 1990 offers three approaches with respect to the application of partial factors. The UK National Annex to EN 1990 states that approach 1 is adopted. In this approach, two load combinations, known as sets, are considered. Load set 1. 1 1.35 times dead load when load is contributing to destabilizing condition. 1 times dead load, when load is acting counter to a destabilizing condition. 1.5 times surcharge when load is contributing to destabilizing condition. 0 times surcharge when load is acting counter to a destabilizing condition. For load set 2. 1 times dead load when load is contributing to destabilizing condition. 1.3 times surcharge when load is contributing to destabilizing condition. So, back to our worked example. To calculate the ultimate loads for designing the wall, we would have load set 1. 1.35 times 13.2, which equals 17.82 kN per meter. And 1.5 times 20, which equals 30 kN per meter. For load set 2, 1 times 13.2 equals 13.2 kN per meter. And 1.3 times 20, which equals 26. Thanks for watching. 
We hope you found some useful tips. Check out our website at structuralengineercalcs.com. Please like and subscribe, and let us know what would you like to see next. The Human Footprint is a masterpiece of engineering and a work of art. Stay safe. Goodbye, and see you soon.